Number seven ministries. The spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news. Hello, welcome to Number Seven Ministries Christian Outreach. Today's short sermonette is called Unlocking the Love of Jesus. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3, it says, I care very little if I am judged by you or by any human court. Indeed, I do not even judge myself. Now this is actually a very powerful Bible verse because it gives us direction and it gives us secrets as Christians in how to unlock the love of Jesus Christ. Because all of us in the natural, the way that we were born with sin nature from Adam and Eve, it's not within our flesh, within our natural being to seek after God but it's within our pride, within our lustful nature that we are to seek the approval of mankind and get the approval of the system of man. But, however, with that being said, God installed something inside of each and every one of us which is a spiritual hunger for all of us to be satisfied, which is why we can reach out to everything around us within the natural and we could obtain everything around us within the natural and it still won't satisfy us we'll still be hungry for more it's only until we unlock the love of jesus christ that we will begin to enter into the purpose of our life we will start to realize that that is the only possible way to spiritually satisfy us is through jesus christ and apostle paul was giving us some cues and some secrets on what to do one of them he says i don't care if i'm judged by any of you in other words apostle paul was saying i'm not living my life to seek the approval of our brothers and our sisters in the Lord and I'm not w living my life to seek my approval from those that are outside of the faith he was just saying in general I'm not looking for approval from man in general because if I'm approved by man that doesn't guarantee that I'm approved by God and if I'm approved by God that doesn't mean I'm approved by man and what else, he, what else he's saying is that he's not concerned about the judgment of man's court system because the law is only good as it lines up with the Word of God. So the moment that the man's law and man's system, man's government starts to deviate from what the Bible is saying, then we have to make a choice as Christians. Are we going to continue to follow man's system or are we going to continue to follow God's system? And the, the other thing that he mentioned was this, is that he doesn't even judge himself. Why doesn't he judge himself? Because our judgment from our natural perspective is tainted. It's out of uh, a distortion. Because we could judge ourselves to be good and God says, no, you're bad. Or we could judge ourselves to be bad and God says, no, you're good. So we have to wait on the judgment of the Lord so God can show us and tell us what we're doing that is right and what we're doing that is wrong and you know it's funny about humans the way we deal and interpret one another and I, I guess what I'm trying to say is that when we live our life and we desperately try to seek the approval of other people it's often in our effort that we push other people away I'm saying the harder we try to get the approval of people, the less likely people are to actually approve of us. And I found out that the less we try to get the approval of people, the more people are interested and fascinated with why are we not trying to get the approval of other people, and that actually draws them to us. It's very bizarre. Jesus would say things like, eat my flesh, drink my blood. See, I don't believe Jesus was trying to win the approval of other people. He was trying to win the approval of his heavenly Father. He said, I do nothing of my own and I say nothing of my own, but that what my Father tells me to do and that what my Father in heaven tells me to say. And I'm going to tell you, when we become more concerned 
about what our Father in Heaven thinks, it's that in itself is actually going to draw people to us. In Romans chapter 5, verse 8, But God demonstrated His own love for us in this. While we were yet still sinners, Christ died for us. And you know, I just really want to marinate on the scripture for a little bit. Why we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. What is exa what exactly is that saying? That's saying while we were yet child molesters, while we were yet rapers, while we were yet bank robbers, while we were yet drug dealers, while we were yet murderers and killers, while we were yet criminals, why we were yet telling white lies, why we were yet entertaining lustful thoughts, why we were yet greedy and selfish. Christ died for us. Why we were still sinning, actually during that sin in the spiritual realm, Christ died for you and I. And now this is the thing. In order to unlock the love of Jesus Christ, you can't understand Logically speaking, the love that Jesus has for us, Jesus' love goes beyond our logic. It doesn't make any sense why God would love us while we were yet sinners. It doesn't make any logic why he would die for child molesters and rapers and robbers and liars and selfish, greedy people. It doesn't make any sense to our natural understanding. We either have to believe that Jesus loves us or we don't. But if we try to connect our good deeds to God's love, then we're missing the mark. And if we try to think that because of our bad deeds stops us from being able to receive God's love, then we're also missing the mark. But if we repent of our sin and ask Jesus Christ to forgive us, and forgive other people, we will begin to unlock the love of Jesus Christ. I was homeless, I was living on the go-kart track, and they burned that to the ground Thursday the 24th at 7 p.m. I have nothing. I am a veteran. I got out in 1968. Does that tell you what war I was in? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm getting nothing from anybody except hell. And uh, I'm going to give them back the pee that they said they were going to give me. Don't anybody swim backstroke because you'll drown on...